Welcome to Discover Janesville. My name is Yuri Rashkin, and today we are guests at Kudos Coffee Shop here in downtown Janesville, 119 North Main. Come on down, have a cup of coffee. And uh, our guest today is Jose Carrillo, who is involved in lots of different things. And Jose, thank you, thank you for being here, first of all. Oh, thank, thank you for you, taking thank time and your busy schedule to be here. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. I'm glad to, to know that you dressed up, not for us, but there was another meeting that you had to <laughs> be at. Correct. There was that's another correct. board meeting. This was United Migrant Opportunity Service that yeah, you were... That's correct. What, what, is, what uh, uh, does that organization do? Well, the organization is uh, it's an organization to serve people. Okay. That's exactly the, the end of the... I think that they had funds from the federal government and for several grants to help people they are in need and people who have needs. Uh, people who are struggling getting things down and, and you must, as an organization, speak for them and, and try to help them to easy their lives. Yeah. Make excellent. their lives better, yeah. Now, you originally started with GM in uh, 1976. 76, yeah. And you were there your, until you retired in 2005. That's correct. Uh, that was a, a thing that I, you never think that you're going to live so long in one job. <laughs> but I was very fortunate and lucky then. Before then I was you know able it, to it's been three yeah. decades. Yeah, time flies. <laughs> time flies. And I was able to retire. And that's so I, I hear retired people are busier than, than working people sometimes. Sometimes, because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. people expect, expect you to to help out, and and you are you are involved in so many different things. I was seeing you're in labor council for Latin American advancement, and you're president I'm of that president. organization. That's good. You're um, migrant field. You were migrant field laborer yourself in Wisconsin Myself, that's before correct. you started with GM. Uh, yes, I actually I come from from America Morris, which is another company, car company, then it doesn't exist anymore. In Kenosha, that's where I started working. In oh, there. okay. Being Kenosha. a member of the UAW in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and then from there I moved to to Janesville. To Janesville, but before prior to that I was a migrant worker in Wisconsin, coming from California. So you're originally from California? No, I'm from Mexico. <laughs> okay, but I so let's was uh, working let's in California. Asking the same thing. Yeah, so yeah. you're no, I'm actually from. You know, so you're not from California. You're from Mexico. I'm from Mexico. How old were you when you came to this country? I was, I was uh, about 18, 19 years in between those two years, before my 19, my 19th birthday, and after my 18th birthday. Yeah. And you came to California. California. And how long were you before you? How old were you when you came to Wisconsin? Now uh, I came to Wisconsin in 1971 which is uh, a couple of years later than I... Okay. Uh, yeah. And you were a trustee of the Hedberg Public Library. I was, yes. How did you decide to get involved with Hedberg Public Library? Well, uh, sometimes it's people ask you <laughs> if you want to get involved. And uh, that time I have the time and I have the opportunity to people trust in me, then I can be a service and then I decide to, why not? So this was an opportunity for you to be to help somebody because yes. they asked they asked for help. Yeah, and you felt that this was something that you wanted. It to was do. very well to, to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah. And you're active with Rock County Partners in Prevention. Uh, I I haven't been lately in the meetings because my schedule changed. Because after I retire, I start uh, working for the uh, Janesville School District. Okay. Yeah. And what do you do with the Janesville School District right now? Right now, I'm a teacher's aide. I okay. work with the Latino kids, and I help them in the fields of science and, and think, uh, math and chemistry and physics, calculus, and all the kind of stuff like that. Well, it's so important for kids to have a role model that has similar background to them. And also, give me the opportunity to uh, give something back because I was giving those opportunities myself too from other people. Otherwise, I won't be able to go to college or anything because other people give me the hand and open the, open the doors for me. So I decide to stay around a little bit longer here in Jansville and, and try to help. 
I've read somewhere that the tallest tree in the forest is not the tallest tree because it has the best whatever genes or whatever, <laughs> but it's because the trees around it, because the, the surface wasn't such, because every, you know, the tallest tree is a result of all the trees around exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, I, I believe uh, it's my passion to uh, give same, the same opportunities to other people than, than I have. And the only, the only reason that I have those opportunities is because there's people there to trust me and give me the opportunity to, to represent or to serve. And they had the trust in me. But I prepared two. It's not just, it's got to be two ways to uh, prepare myself to take those opportunities. So you were prepared when the opportunities came, and so you were able to take advantage of those opportunities, which is... Exactly. Which is good. And it's one of the things that I believe too is uh, the only way you can get uh, on the economic ladder is through education and to organize labor. So organized labor is one of the things that I always I encourage other people to look into because it's very important to make sure that you have a voice in your workplace. And also it's very important that you have education because they give you an opportunity to I get a better jobs and better opportunities. Well, and now they're talking about teaching in schools of history organized labor. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good thing. And I, I'm glad that it's, it's coming because uh, a lot of people forget. Organized labor was the ones that created the middle class in this country. And if I wasn't for my union, I don't have the opportunity to be sitting and talking to you right now. And because my union gave me the opportunity to serve also and to prepare me because I went through a lot of training through the union and not just... So it opened a lot of doors for you? Yeah, and the history of the labor movement and why it's important to, to be organized and have a voice in, in the workplace. But, uh, and you have a, a, a lapel pin there for... Cesar Chavez. Chavez. Actually, that's... Uh, when I was in California, I was working in the fields there, and then I had the opportunity. Have you met to, him? Yes, had the opportunity right. to meet him and and Dolores Huerta, which was the two people who were organizing the union there. And not just that, but I was uh, helping them to organize the, the farm workers in California. Wow, that's a little yeah. dangerous job. Or? Uh, uh, well. If you ne never take a risk, uh, nothing is going to be done. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's a good way to look at it. It's a good way to look at it. And uh, oh goodness, you're you're on Prison Industries Board. That uh, was something that I've I, I was. Uh, what what does that entail? Well, uh, this uh, the, the board is a state board. It's uh, appointed by the governor. Yes, you are, you are appointed by the State Senate? By the State Senate, yeah. Uh, I was ratified by the State Senate. Right. Okay. But I was appointed by the governor. That's right, but the, the uh, Senate had mm -hmm. to vote in your position. It, yeah. You're like a Supreme Court justice, you well, know. <laughs> they had to all get together <laughs> yeah, and yeah. vote on you. So. Yeah. And what it does, it titles this, uh, this board is to oversee the, the industries on, on the prisons. They make sure they are not competing with the local uh, jobs or people who have chops or something like that. Then, then, and also they make sure that all the jobs are doing uh, in, in human and in oh, sure. and, and a good matter, you know, because sometimes when you hear about prison labor, you know, you think about it's going to be, <laughs> they don't pay nothing. You <laughs> it's know, it's not a good thing, right. Yeah. It's not a positive but I, association. But it's, it's very, very positive thing that the board oversees all this conditions there and also approves programs or industries then it's going to be uh, part of the rehabilitation of the inmates. And usually this, this is what it is, it's part of uh, to make sure then when those people who have the misfortune to be there, when they get out, they have a trade, they, they'll be able to integrate in society in the most positive way.